This is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and in this video, I wanna talk about the new Pro Tools commit feature. Next, we would uh, wanna show you how to commit. So um, I showed you one of the ways now is you could just quickly say, um, you know, right click on the track, say commit up to this insert. Say we got these uh, tracks selected, we could just right click again. We got the commit option. Um, we could just right click on our track name. We got the commit option, um, and we could also do it, uh, say select an audio clip, right click, and we have the commit option. My personal preference that I seem to want to do all the time is just use the shortcut, which on Windows is just Alt-Shift-C. And here is the commit dialog. Um, first thing we wanna start with is how we're going to commit. Are we gonna commit from selected tracks? Or are we gonna commit from an edit selection? So if I put it on uh, selected tracks, it will ignore edit selection in here and then it will render or commit the audio all the way up through the end of the selection until there is no more audio or anything to commit. So in this case, uh, say this um, MIDI clip here extends out the furthest, it would commit at least up to this MIDI clip. So because of that, I find it's not really my preferred way to work. So I prefer to work with the edit selection. So if you don't have any audio selected and you pull up the commit window, it won't let you choose edit selection. So let's select some audio here. And now it'll let us choose edit selection. Now when you have edit selection chosen, it will commit any of the tracks you have a selection on. So in this case, it will commit these three tracks. Let's look at that and go ahead and commit this section. We'll hit OK. We'll ignore the other settings. So here is uh, our three committed tracks. So you can see the kick one .cm. So whenever it commits, the extension is now .cm. So next up here is the consolidate clip feature. Um, obviously when it's checked, it means to uh, uh, consolidate all the adjoining clips on each track. When it's unchecked, um, it's meant to try to keep the clips intact uh, when you're committing. So here, for example, if we take... Um, say this track here and we have multiple clips in it and you're wanting to keep those tr uh, clips intact after you commit. Um, I find it doesn't work real well. Um, if I had to guess, I believe it has to do with, um, it's working off a low level noise and there's a threshold. And when the noise falls below a certain threshold, it'll end a clip. And if it goes above the threshold, it'll start a new clip. And I think sometimes with these adjoining clips like this, it's not working. Working. Another variable is that uh, some plugins will have a low level noise for like a, um, you know, an analog simulation feature or something like that. And so there's this constant low level noise in there that is keeping the um, actual, uh, keeping the clips intact. It's keeping it from working properly. So here for a quick example, um, we would go, it's not selected. And so all the clips are still adjoining. So let's try it here where there's an actual space between the clips. And not checked. And here we can see it actually keeps the clips intact when there's a spot for the noise thresholds to fall below a certain level. And if we were wanting to consolidate the clip, um, we would just pull it up and it'll create a single file. So the next option here is volume and mute. So let's look at that real quick. 
Um, when you do not have that selected and you commit uh, audio, so here is on that click track, here's some volume automation where it goes real low to real loud. And let's take that off. Uh, it'll just commit the audio at basically unity level, so just zero. So you can see the automation was just ignored. It just committed the clip, no volume. So if we wanted that with our volume automation written, There you can see there's not much volume, it's real low. And then when the volume jumps up, there our waveform goes. Uh, when you're on a stereo track, uh, the pan option becomes available, so it will commit your pans as well. Um, now we got under copy, sends and group assignments. What this is for is if uh, your source track here, in this case will say kick one, has any sends on it, um, it will, uh, copy the sends or if you have group settings on here, it will copy all of that to the new commit track. So let's look at that real quick. So we have our sends and group assignments on. And now it uh, committed. So here on uh, the first uh, kick track that has the send on it, uh, it copied the send over to the new commit track. So if you have that option not selected, it will not copy the send over. It will hold on to the input and output settings, but not the sender group assignments. Uh, the next thing to talk about is the insert after last selected track. Um, there is basically two ways after you commit a track uh, that the track will be pulled into the session and where the track will be placed. So if it is not selected, uh, the track, the committed track will be placed directly after the source track. So let's look at that. So we'll shut that off. Now the committed tracks are placed directly after the source track. If you have insert after last selected track, it will put all of the um, committed tracks in a row and not directly after the source track. So in this case, if we uh, have the box checked and hit commit, Now they're directly in a row after the source tracks. And the last feature to talk about is this drop down box that after you commit a track, what it will do to the source tracks. Uh, you can hide and make an active, just make an active, delete, or do nothing. Um, do nothing is going to seem like the safe option to me, but here for a quick example, let's just put it on make inactive, commit. And now my two source tracks are both inactive. And the last feature here to talk about is the offline online bounce. Um, the difference here, if you're not working with hardware inserts, you will probably want to just work offline just for the obvious speed reasons. But if you are using hardware inserts and you wanna commit, you can, but you have to do that uh, online. So it can process the tracks through your hardware, obviously, which has to be at real time. So this was a fairly quick overview of the new commit feature. Um, obviously I didn't cover exactly everything it can do, but uh, this will give you an idea, get you going, get you started. Um, Contact us with any questions uh, later on. Maybe I'll do a video on a little more in-depth stuff. I'm not sure. And um, thank you for watching the video. Mm -hmm.